The first game in the best of 3 series for Battle for Christmas tournament, VFM me to the race of the Witch King between Irby against Mr. Smog Dwarfs against Random is all about to begin. Let's get it started. We are on the map Westfold Edit and the matchup is going to be Elves against Dwarves which is really nice. My top 5 players of Rise of the Witch King, I would say, uh, you know, from the experience I was able to gain in the last tournaments, I would say Imperialist, uh, Mr. Smog, um, Irby, and it's kinda hard for the last 2 spots. I'm not very certain about that, so I need to think about it. I'm gonna answer you guys that in Discord. <laughs> Hi, Oleg, welcome. Rocky, my man, welcome. Alrighty. So we have two Malone trees coming up for the Alvin player, Mr. Smog, who was picking random, by the way, guys. And his opponent, Irby, was pre-picking the Dwarven faction. So, you know, he doesn't know that Mr. Smog is uh, Elven faction. Uh, but on the other side, Mr. Smog knows that he is facing against Dwarves. And yeah, this matchup can go either way, and I feel like what the Dwarf player Irby has to do is pressure Mr. Smog early on. Because we know that Dwarven faction is potentially the best faction to snowball with, so once you have a lead, you can actually keep going and keep attacking constantly from multiple sides. And actually keep Mr. Smog checked all the time. But if this not gonna happen, then I feel like Elven player can actually win this game quite easily. And I feel like this is the same situation like with the Goblins, once you are falling behind with the Dwarves, it's really hard for you to actually win the games. So we have two mineshafts around the fortress into the Hall of Warriors, which is by the way the tankiest barracks in the game, with 4000 HP with level 1. And we always have to keep an eye on the builders from Irby. One of them is building a mineshaft around the bottom left side, and the second one is moving actually forward. There is a mineshaft coming up in the middle of the map as well, and I think Mr. Smog now has to scout the area and has to play a little bit more defensively, early on at least. Because we know if you don't be, if you're not gonna be ready for a defense, those guardians with the rallying cold buff, they're gonna hit like an absolute track. And that's why Mr. Smog is using his builders to scout the area. If Irby win, it would be crazy. He didn't play for six months or something. Yeah, this match is gonna hit like a track exactly fiesta mode. <laughs> Alex, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Alex. Appreciate that. Okay, so PowerPoint-wise, Rallying Call is ready for Mr. Smog and also ready for Irby. So nothing is happening so far, but the builder got uh, actually spotted. The Warren builders, they have a little bit more vision control. They are fast, so the Lorian warriors, they shouldn't be able to catch them. Uh, okay, so the first attack is gonna happen now. There is a wall-up coming up from Mr. Smog just to body block those Guardians. There are two battalions of Guardians, by the way, guys. And Mr. Smog has only one archer around, I think that's not gonna be enough. And if Irby going for an attack now, he can actually at least take, at bare minimum, take two Malone trees. And he should be splitting those units, by the way. The Lorian warriors are coming, but they won't be there in time, and the Malone tree has to get demolished really fast. Okay, Rallying Call is being used from Mr. Smog now defensively. And he's gonna use one of his Lorian warriors offensively. He was already able to reach the other side of the map, which is really nice. And yeah, that's a smart move here from Mr. Smog, you know, using the whole crown stance to be able to tank those guardians and the archers are in the aggressive stance, which is gonna maximize their damage output. And I think if Irby focuses down this Malone tree, he can actually take it down, but it might be too late for that now. He's actually taking way too much damage from the fortress. Smart move, smart micro from Mr. Smog. And he will be actually getting away with only losing one Malone tree which was getting demolished by Mr. Smog, that means Irby was not able to get any kind of experience. Look, Mr. Smog has a little bit more power points collected, 400 command points for Mr. Smog, and 400 command points also for Irby. There is still the mineshaft up on the field, by the way, at the bottom side, so Mr. Smog has to make sure to destroy that really fast. This Malo uh, Malone tree is kind of, yeah, I think it's gonna be close, but he will be able to destroy that. It's gonna be really close. Actually, not close enough. The Malone tree has been taken down. But I think that's fine for Mr. Smog because he was able to keep those Malone trees. Those two are really important because they are from the beginning of the game. Look at the experience level. They are almost level 2. And with that being said, uh, Smog will have a unit advantage because he keeps killing units all the time without losing any units by himself. 
which is gonna eventually, you know, make him really strong at some point and he can go for a massive counter attack. But we know the fact that, oh nice, nice actually here from uh, Irving, he was barely able to keep this mineshaft alive and the battle wagon is joining the battlefields now. This battle wagons, they got nerfed with the Man of Deal. So we, as I'm assuming we're gonna see some of them with Banner Carrier and some of them with the Well. You know, once, you know, one of them is gonna be for the leadership part to make the unit stronger and the other one is gonna be for the sustain to heal up the units constantly. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm curious, uh, he was able to destroy this mineshaft at the bottom side, which is really nice. And he was also able to save this Lorien warrior, so if he builds up a well, he can actually sustain, you know, over time. He's going to creep the war clan at the bottom right side now. And you can see the game got slowed down a little bit, and that's really uh, in favor of Mr. Smug. Because he was able to kill uh, the mineshaft around his own side, side, uh, around his own side successfully, which is really nice. Now he can go for the creeps, you know, maintain his Malone trees, expand during all this time, build a well for the sustain. And Irby has to make something happen now. The builder from Mr. Smoke was able to get away. And this battle wagon has no upgrades just yet. But I'm assuming we're gonna see this one with the banner carry upgrade for the double buff action. Because rallying call is available now for both the players. And Smoke is going for a counter attack, but that kinda leaves this side open. He has Hylder on the field though, but not many other units around. That means this attack from Irby can deal massive amount of damage. I mean, on the other side, Smoke is also going to be able to deal decent amount of damage with the Lorien Warriors and Pikemen. He has enough units to destroy those mineshafts. Look at that. And uh, Irby has to do something about that. Okay, Rallying Call was used defensively from Mr. Smoke. That means he won't have the buff available for this unit. Aldir is in, in a great position, using the aggressive stance. Nice trample, by the way, with the battle wagon. He has the banner carry upgrade on it, and that means those guardians, they are really tanky, while they are dealing also massive amount of damage, guys. This Malone tree level 2, almost level 2, is gonna be taken down next. Look at the damage they are able to deal. Smart move here from Haldir, chasing down uh, the battle wagon, but he has to be careful, he's super low. Does he have heal available, though? He can go for the heal if he wants to. But I'm assuming you wanna go for the Mist, which makes sense because Mist is gonna, you know, nullify the enemy leadership, which means also the leadership from the battle wagons are gonna be negated. Haldir is leveling up, he's level 3 already. We know how impactful Haldir is going to be in the late game. Once he has the leadership unlocked with level 5, and especially with the Golden Arrow, which will be unlocked with level 8, he can have a massive influence in those big fights by stunning the enemy units. Okay, heal is being used from Irby, by the way. We wanna keep going, and actually he was able to destroy quite a lot of uh, Malon trees. He has 475 command points collected by himself. He might lose the Forge Works, uh, but it's quite tanky. It has 4000 health, just like the Hall of Warriors, so... You know, in order to take it down, I think Mr. Smog has to sacrifice quite a lot of units. On the other side, actually, Smog is going for the Elvin Wood and using that offensively. Elvin Wood? Um, from the Elvin faction is giving you also fear resistant, by the way, guys, which doesn't have any impact right now. Because the Dwarven faction doesn't have any fear effect, so I think Elvin Wood can be situationally a great choice against something like Mordor faction, you know, or Man of the West, which can be a counter to the Horn of Gonzo from uh, Boromir. The Elvin player is quite behind, he has no Malone trees around the fortress, he's going for the second barracks now. 150 command points available for Mr. Smug. Two and a half power points collected, but he's also dealing a massive amount of damage to Irby. So it's like a base trait at this point of the game. And the whole of Boris is gonna be taken down, but luckily he has another one. And look at that. I mean, the whole of Boris is very, very tanky, so it takes a lot of time. Oh, Revealed is gonna save the day. But I think that's absolutely fine for, uh, for Mr. Smug. Because he was forcing his opponent Irby to go for all the 5 power points from the spellbook, that's gonna delay his 10 power points. And Mrs. Smoke on the other side can actually skip now the heal or foresight and try to go for the 15 as soon as possible. Okay, and he has now some arches around that should be enough to defend himself. Um, I can't see ha Haldir on the field anymore, did Haldir actually die? I think he died. But I was not paying attention. The Hall of Warriors has been taken down. The Mineshaft level 2 is going down next. 
Rallying call is being used from Mr. Smog now offensively. Let me tell you that much. Irby doesn't have many units left on the field. He has actually like only a couple of guardians, you know, there and there. That's all. And one pikeman in the middle of the map. But he has nothing to defend himself against such an attack. And the second, but also the last, Hall of Warriors is gonna be taken down next. And yeah, I mean that's uh, I think that's a nice move here from uh, from Mr. Smock. Not playing super defensively against uh, against dwarves, but actually trying to defend himself with you know like high gear and couple of archers and using all the other units to go for an attack. Irby for now will be safe, as Mr. Smock is forced to retreat. And smart move also from Irby creeping the troll layer in the middle of the map, which is always nice against elves because you want to open the middle, but also especially because of the money you can get from the creep. Um, Alright, the mineshaft at the bottom side is going to be taken down next, but there are only arches around and they won't be dealing any damage to those um, structures. That's why he needs some Lorian warriors or pikemen. Barracks are level 1. Uh, he keeps going and I think he might be able to take it down still. Let's see. I mean, only a couple of uh, pikemen are left. He was also able to save the level 3 Lorian warrior battalion, which is super nice. I think slowly but surely the Hall of Warriors is going to be taken down, that's why he needs to go for another one in the backside. And that's the pressure you want to actually put on the Dwarves. And remember what I was saying at the beginning of the, of the game guys. With Dwarves you don't want to fall behind, because once you fall behind it's really, really difficult to come back from. I mean there are some factions they are made to be behind almost all game long, like Mordor faction for example. You are the one who is defending all the time and then... You, you know, re you reach a milestone, you reach a power spike that can easily turn the game around. But the Dwarven faction is none of them. Dwarves, they like to snowball early on. We have now King Bran joining the battlefield, um, who is going to be a nice hero to have against elves because the Beast Slayer arrow can be so effective against ants but also against eagles. So once you get them level 7, you can actually one shot one of the eagles the elven player might summon later on from the powerpoint uh, abilities but he needs a lot of time to actually level up but just taking a look into the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen shows that Mr. Smog has the control of this game for now he has 625 command points collected 7 power points available after elven wood, heal and rallying call on the other side Irby was able to collect 4 power points after rallying call, heal and rebuild and he's only sitting on 475 command points so that is 150 command points difference and also power points advantage is on the side from the elven player Mr. Smog. And here's Double Varax, he keeps spamming units all the time, doesn't go for the upgrades to level 2 for the Mirk Woods because he doesn't need them right now. Um, the builder is running it down, I don't know what he's doing, Irby is gonna be able to get away barely. I mean that's the weakness of the elven faction to be honest, you know, they can't commit on the fortress, that's not gonna be possible. Wall up might be able to snipe at some point you can snipe sometime oh the slam shot though is coming in clutch from king brand smoke has another army at the bottom left side pressuring from this side staying on the elven woods to maintain the bonus from the elven woods passive 50 percent more damage and 50 percent more armor the last remaining level 2 mineshaft from Irby is gonna be taken down next and that's gonna drop down Irby to only 275 command points Actually no, 300, because the level 2 is giving only 75, the level 3 would give 100. Uh, Slamshot is reloading quite fast, so it's gonna be available soon. But the problem is, Irby has barely any units around, and he has to deal now with two groups of units from Mr. Smug. King Brand has to disengage. Has the Slamshot now available? And Irby has also heal available for the worst case scenario, and also rebuild is available. But that's gonna just delay, but not gonna deny what's gonna happen. Nice slam shot, level 4 unlocked now. The train archers is gonna be kinda useless in those kind of situations, because there are no archers or extrovers to level up. And that's gonna be a nice game number 1 for Mr. Smuck. Very well played, was picking random, got the elven faction, you know, played almost a perfect game. And well deserved the victory in the game number 1, but... The game might be over, but the series isn't over yet, guys. We have still at least two more, you know, one more game to go. And the ends from Mr. Smog, they should be, you know, enough to finish off the fortress. GG is being called from Irby. Well played from both two players. Well deserved the victory by Mr. Smog. 
and he's now one win away from continuing in the battle for Christmas tournament in the RB. If he loses the next game, he will be out. Pretty nice. We are ready with the game number 2, this time Irby is gonna switch from the Dwarven faction to the Elven faction and Mr. Smog keeps picking random. I mean obviously he can afford it because he was winning the first game. And uh, picking random can be a double edged sword, sometimes you get a really bad matchup for yourself and the only good thing about that in this format of the unrevealed tournament is that Irby doesn't know the faction of Mr. Smog. So Mr. Smog gets to play the Goblin faction. But again, Irby doesn't see what we see. We are on the map Plains of Linden, guys. At the bottom side of the map, we have the yellow Elven player Irby against the blue Goblin player Mr. Smog at the top side. I think that's a difficult matchup for the Goblin faction because this map is not very big and I feel like Goblins, they are struggling in long terms against Elves big time. But we are talking about Mr. Smog, who is the world champion of 2019, world champion of 2020 if anyone can make it work, it has to be Mr. Smog, guys. Two tunnels into the spider pit start. Now, obviously, Mr. Smog has an advantage in this game because he knows that he's against elves, but Irby doesn't know that he's against goblins. Two Malone trees into the barracks into the third Malone tree. In the game number two, Smog is also starting with the war chant, and Irby is not risking a foresight pick, which can reveal the shroud, but he's going for the safe pick, which is Rallying Coal. And I feel like that makes sense because buffs in Rise of the Witch King are so powerful, you don't want to miss them. And if you don't have the buff available for the first one or two fights, that can actually end up really bad for you guys. The buffs, you know, increasing the damage of your units by 50% as well as the armor is very powerful and super impactful. Okay, two Malone trees, barracks into the third Malone tree, nothing too crazy, nothing too spicy, a normal start. Into the into the uh, pikeman, he's gonna go for the creep at the bottom right side. He's gonna lure the troll away from the lair. This way, the pikeman they can actually kill the troll without taking any damage and creep that super duper easy. The goblin player on the other side is going for the spider links. He's expanding around the top left side, building two more tunnels. Um, spider links, I I like them quite a lot. I feel like they are really strong in the early mid game, but I also feel like they are really falling off in the late game. Especially against elves, because spiderlings are very vulnerable. Against archers, we know that. Oh, the builder has to be careful. Sometimes actually, you know, sometimes you end up losing a builder and that's the worst case scenario. But if you don't lose the builder, that's gonna happen. You will be able to creep the troll without taking any damage, which is super nice. And now he can be done with the creep in the next 20 seconds. And that's gonna make those pikemen level 2, he's gonna be able to get some money and also capture this in, which for the elven faction means that he can recruit some of these peasants from Rohan. Irby now making the transition into the stable, that means we're gonna see some lancers on the field. Lancers, by the way, are very weak against those spiderlings, spiderlings are super great counters to those lancers. And very cheap units and mobile units as well. He was also creeping the work layer, by the way, Mr. Smug. That's why one of those spiderlings is leveled. Oh, the builder is being caught. Oh, no. Hello, darkness, my old friend. The builder is goners, boys. The builder is goners, but he can't fight against those pikemen. But super nice from Mr. Smog. Was able to creep the work layer, get some money. Was able to kill one of the two builders from Irby, which is super nice. And gonna actually deny Irby quite a lot. Oh, he's committing to that barracks with clumped units. Spiderlings, by the way, if you don't know, they are getting stealthed around the trees. But I think that's a risky move, you know, for uh, Mr. Smog. He might be able to take it down, but he might also lose all the spiderlings. I feel like that's the perfect situation. He will be, be able to get away with both the spiderlings. They are now both level 2. And he was able to kill the builder and the barracks. I mean, that's the dream start into the game number 2 from Mr. Smog. I think you can't have a better game like this than this. The Spiderlings, they won't be able to finish off this Malone tree, but they were able to damage that quite a lot. And that's gonna force Irvin now to rebuild the barracks, which means a lot of time for um, Mr. Smog. Irvin on the other side was going for the stable level 2, and he's gonna get those Linden Horse Archer Battalions, which makes sense because we are on the map Plains of Linden, so we will need some Linden units on the field as well, guys. 
They are getting some peasants, but they are gonna be very weak against those spiderlings. You can also upgrade them with the Rohirrim shields, which cost additionally 50. Which is gonna, you know, give them more armor. And they are also 150 units, I mean, they cost only 150 each. They are quite cost efficient. Okay, uh, Smog was able to creep another work layer, which is the last work layer on the map Plains of Linden. Because on this map we have two work layers and two troll layers in total. Um, and he's gonna keep up the pressure all the time. And that's the beautiful part about those spiderlings. They are very mobile, they are quite strong, dealing quite a lot of damage, especially if you group up with them, you know, with two battalions at once. And that's their goal, that's their mission, that's their... You know, that's what they are supposed to do. It's a bad, bad fight for Erby to take. You don't want to be in melee range against those units. And he's going to lose quite a lot of those horse archers in this situation. And they are very expensive units, by the way, as well. They cost 500 each. But in order to get them on the field, you need to first of all upgrade your stable to level 2. And unlike the Lancers from Rivendell, they won't steal any kind of damage to the structures. Because unlike Rohirrim or Spider Riders, they are not able to switch between Sword and Bow. They can only be ranged units. Which means they are only good for killing units, but nothing else. Tainted Land was used offensively, but that's a nice attack actually from Erby. Look at that. Rylan Cole is being used. Warchand is not available. Tainted Land is not available. Is he committing on the fortress? Really? I mean, he has some archers and peasants around. I was not even seeing that attack coming, guys. And the good thing about the Goblin Faction and the Goblin Fortress is the fact that your expansions are building up super fast. Like, if you build a tower, it's gonna be up in like 10 seconds. Which makes it incredibly difficult for the Elven player to, com to commit against a Goblin Fortress in the beginning of the game. I mean, later on with Ants or something like this, it's gonna be much, much easier. But early on, you can't take it down that easy. But he might be able to, you know, destroy a couple of these tunnels, which is very necessary at this point of the game, because Mr. Smog has a massive advantage. Warchan is being used defensively. We have Half-Troll Swordsman on the field, the, one of the strongest Swordsmen in the game. The most expensive Swordsman in the game as well, alongside with the Urukai from Isengard and the Black Numenorians from the Engmar faction. And once they get level 2, the charge attack is gonna replace the Warchant, so you can actually maintain the buff even after Warchant is gonna dispire, you know? Which is super nice. 400 command points are available for Mr. Smog. He has, you know, zero expansions, uh, Barrow expansion around the Fortress which can increase his command points by 75 each. Uh, on the other side, we have 4, 7, 425 command points available for the Elven player. The inn at the bottom right side is getting destroyed, but the problem is that, you know, that Erby has barely any units around, and he has not even a barracks up on the field anymore. He went for the stable level 3, which makes it more tanky. It has now 6000 HP, and on top of that, it will be able to shoot down the enemy units. He needs to heal up with those units over time. And losing the inn means quite a lot also, because he can't recruit any infantry units at this point, because he has no barracks. After all, swordsmen are coming. They can't get trampled down, by the way, guys. You can't go over them. That's not possible, so he needs to kill them by right-clicking on them and, you know, damaging them over time. And that's why they are so good against the calf as well, because they can't get trampled down. That's, you know, quite impressive for swordsmen. Um, he's now finally building up a barracks, but Erby for now has to play, for sure, very defensively. Okay, he's baiting them into the into the well, that's gonna... You know, nice move here, killing a, quite a lot of units, but losing the Malone 3 level 2 in the front side. I mean, luckily Warchand is not available for this fight. Imagine Warchand is being available now. Riding Call is being used, but Keef Bats are flying around, that should be debuffing the enemy units. They're gonna lose some damage and armor, but... You know... And charge attack is being used, that's gonna again replace the Warchan, so those units, they are buffed now, and debuffing the enemy units makes those half troll swordsmen super, super strong. Look how much damage they are able to deal, and how much damage they are able to tank. Irby is saying GG. It was a nice game from Mr. Smog, incredible start into the game, and players like Mr. Smog, they know how to snowball their lead guys. And they know how to win those games. Very well played from Smoky. He's gonna continue in the Battle for Christmas tournament. And Irby, who was originally a replacement for C-Knight, who signed off from the tournament, has to say goodbye after the first series. GG well played.